Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Damien with another lesson of CPPforbeginners.com's uh, continuing tutorial series. This is going to be lesson number 37. We're going to be dealing with RAND and probability. Um, I'm not sure if I said I would do more with F in and F out. If you guys want to see more of that, leave me a comment. I'll make another video. It's no big deal. It's basically the same as C in and C out, except you need a file to correspond to it. So, Okay. And you'll notice that I've included two sort of abnormal libraries that I don't normally include here. Time.h and Iominip. Well, I guess that's been fairly common. Time.h is a, uh, a throwback to the C days. Um, anything with .h actually comes from classic C. Now then, I'm not going to get too into what we're going to be doing with srand. Just know that if you want something to be truly random, or at least truly pseudo-random, you're going to need to include time.h and use srand. So before we do anything else, we're going to do srand time null. And the basic idea behind this line is srand is going to be seeding our random number based on the time down here in the system clock that we run the program. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be programming here. Um, a short little while ago, I had a request from a user who wanted to understand more about probability and understand how to code for probability and things of that nature. And they asked me, you know, say I just wanted to do something simple with probability and make a, a dice rolling program. How would I go about doing that? We have to talk first about the characteristics of dice. What do we know about them? Dice have six faces. You know, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, they're totally random. And if we're going to be doing probability, we need to do multiple rolls. So that's all pretty fair. So we're going to have two major variables here. And those are going to be number of rolls and faces of the dice. So in this case, the number of rolls is just going to be a simple int. Um, if you're using a really big number, you can use a long or, or a double or something along those lines. I'm just going to use an int because I'm the only person running it. So we'll just call this int num rolls. And then we're going to see out and ask the user, how many times would you like to roll the dice? Simple enough. Then we're going to see in for num rolls. Um, again, if you if you guys want, you can use string stream and validate this and go crazy. I don't have time to. I have a 15 minute limit on my videos. Sorry. Um, if you're interested in that, video 35. So, all right. They're going to input some number. So then what we need to do is sort of understand what we're going to be doing with dice. So if we want uh, a dice, that means we need a container, which is going to allow us to have at least six spaces. Now, we can use a vector for this, but for the sake of simplicity, there's really nothing wrong with using an array here. Um, if we use a vector, we'll, we'll probably be using it the same way as an array. And in that case, it would just be extra memory overhead. Not that, you know, the couple extra bytes would really matter, but we'll just declare an array of ints, and we'll call it a int dice outcome. And we're going to make it uh, 6, which means that the internal members are going to be 0 to 5. And we're going to s initialize it to 0. So that's going to be 0 to 5, all set to 0. So that's pretty useful. Um, we now basically have a dice to work with. Now. What we need to do here is construct a for loop, simple for loop. 
and we're going to say 4 int i equals 0. i is less than num rolls i plus plus. So it's just going to be a simple loop that's going to execute until we've performed a certain number of rolls. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that, right? And for each iteration through the loop, we're going to do something a little different than we've done in the past. Normally, we're setting the internal components of our uh, array to something using the assignment operator. Normally, we'd be doing something like dice outcome of i is equal to blah, you know, whatever. But that's not what we're doing now. What we're actually going to do is call on rand, which is done just like that. And then we're going to use the modulo sign and six. And what this means is that we're going to select a random number between zero and five as rand is zero indexed as well. Thus, zero uh, percent six equals a random number zero through five. So at this point, we have two things that can both random in two ways. And what this is actually going to produce is a call to one of the locations in this array at random, as though we had rolled a dice or something. So when it selects that location, all we're going to do is plus plus or increment by one. If you want, you can say plus one, same thing. And that's it. That's all we're going to do for that. And that's going to randomly generate however many rolls of dice we want. Now, I'm actually going to change this uh, dice outcome into a double. And you'll see why in a minute. I didn't last time, and I tried to record this, and I ran out of time because I had to go pin down an error. So we're going to make another for loop. And we're going to say for um, int i equals 0 i is less than 6, i++. Plus plus. And so this is going to be outputting the outcome of these rolls. And it's just going to be two cout statements, or well, one cout statement at first. And we're going to start off with a new line character, and then we'll say the number of times that and then in this space here where we're going to skip and we're going to say i plus one um, was rolled is and then we're going to do dice outcome of i and I want to take a second and explain what this means. Now, you remember that we're dealing with a real dice. So the array is 0 to 5. But humans, we really like starting at 1. We don't like 0 indexes. So for each time through this loop, if I just printed out i here, that would mean that we would have the number of times that 0 was rolled. And nobody has the number zero on a dice because visually representing zero isn't really easy on a dice. So in this case, we're going to be relabeling zero, one, and uh, one, two, and you know, so on and so forth. But we're still leaving the actual location of that number the same. So this means that one is actually going to be the number of times zero came up. It's a little bit disingenuous, I suppose, but I don't think anyone's going to fault us for that. Oh, and I've got plenty of time. So now, the way that we're going to handle uh, the probability aspect of this is simple math from here. And we're going to... Uh, I'm going to add another new line statement there. And we'll add an endl here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say the percentage of the total 
that um, i plus 1 came up was, and then we're just going to do a simple little bit of math here, and it's going to be um, dice outcome of i divided by num rolls. And we're going to put all that in parentheses. And then we're going to put it another set of parentheses and multiply by 100. So, okay. This might be a little confusing. Let me explain what's going on here. When you're trying to find the probability of a number, you take the number of times that occurrence happened you divide by the maximum number of occurrences and then to find that'll give you the decimal representation of the number and then you multiply through by a hundred because a hundred is um, the maximum amount of percent so in percent quite literally means out of 100 uh, from a mathematical standpoint so let's roll these dice uh, 2,016 times. It's a fairly random number. And you'll see that when we look through, it tells us how much time or how many times each one was rolled, which numbers came up, and the overall percentage for each. Now, I want to do two things really quickly before we're done here. I'm going to just add a percent sign there. And then I'm just going to add a, an endl after the program. And then I'm going to come up here and add in one thing that brings us back to our old days. And that's set iOS flags. iOS fixed. Set iOS flags. iOS show point and oops and set precision we'll say two should suffice and so oop, and I needed another one there okay so we'll run this one more time and I'll make it big enough so you guys can really see it and we'll say uh, 5017 and so um, we can actually change it so it won't affect these numbers, but I do believe I'm going to run out of time before then. Yeah. So, okay, what have we covered here? We've covered simply how to take what we already know, which is arrays, and sort of manipulate them into... Uh, a sort of thing that we want them to be. In this case, we just want it to count, you know, the probability of numbers that come up. And using this simple um, 35 lines of code, we're able to do that. Um, when you get right down to it, it's probably closer to 25 with all the blank lines and comments. So don't make things too complicated for yourself, is kind of what I want you to take away from this. Um, also know that, you know, arrays aren't always better than vectors. Um, doing a vector, in this case, would have been using it just as an array. Um, also, sran time null and rand are two other things that you should take away. And when you want rand to come out to a number, you mod it. So, with that much being said, I am Damien. Thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll come uh, watch some more of my videos.